Good afternoon from the Go Local Live Navigate Credit Union Broadcast Center in Providence. I'm Rick Simone, and it is time for the taste. Uh, as usual, we've got a great lineup of guests this week, and uh, we decided to have some fun with the segments this week on topics for both actually this week and next week, and so I'll give it a little explanation to next week as well. But today we are talking about love and football. So and that's going to translate into Valentine's Day and Super Bowl. So instead of covering Valentine's Day, the complete segment, we wanted to add some football fun into it and found a couple of great guests that have a lot going on for the Super Bowl. So my first two guests are going to cover Valentine's Day, then we'll transition into the Super Bowl celebrations and big football parties and food for the weekend. Uh, the guest that I have joining today is from the Newport Restaurant Group. I have the Boathouse Restaurant out in uh, Tiverton there, and Chef Lou is going to be joining me from there. I also have Chef Jenny, who's kind of a celebrity chef in her own right, coming in from Redfin Crudo and Kitchen. Very excited to talk to her. A lot of great stuff, and she's got a really cool announcement to bring up for us. Uh, from the Thirsty Beaver, which has two locations, Smithfield and Cranston. Cranston was the ones I used to go to. I've got Chef uh, Sonia joining to come in from us. And then I also have Ladder 133, which is right over here in Providence. And I've got Derek, one of the managing partners, coming in to talk about what they have going on. So a nice mix to cover both the love and the love of football. And then next week we're going to cover Valentine's Day some more with suggestions and thoughts, not just for dining, but also some wines, some gifts, gift ideas, that kind of stuff. So we've got some great guests already lined up for next week, but it'll be about wine and Valentine's Day is the way it's shaping up right now. To get things rolling, let me welcome in Chef Lou from the Boathouse and we'll get started on Valentine's Day. Look Rick, at this, how's Chef. How's it going? Anybody that comes in with wine in one hand and food in the other, you know you're in good shape. I say. Look at this. Beautiful. Italian. That's uh, if Let's my see? arms aren't full, I'm I know that feeling. I'm not doing my okay. job right. This one there. There we go. If your arms aren't full, you're not doing your job right. Exactly. I, I like that. Okay. It's so whether it's hugging, whether it's, you know, whatever it is. So <laughs> I like that. The hugging part is the Italian thing in us too. Yeah, you know. Well, thanks for joining me, Chef, today. I really appreciate yeah, it. Absolutely. Hey, he made the drive up from all the way in Tiverton, the poor guy, you know? Poor, oh man. <laughs> whole 30, 30 minutes. Ugh. So I want to first start out, and this food, the aroma is already driving me crazy, so we're definitely going to get to the food in just a second, but this location, and if you have not been there, this is one of the big things I want to highlight today because it is absolutely a romantic location, which is one of the first reasons I thought about it for a dining segment talking about Valentine's Day. The second reason was is that it's kind of this gem to think about in the off-season. Right? And this is what we call the off-season now. Yeah, I, I may be a little biased, um, <laughs> you know, but I, I, I gotta say, since, you know, the our sunsets go down, you know, starts about four o'clock, 4.30, and the sunsets are just absolutely gorgeous. And that's usually what get, brings people to us, is that beautiful view, the sun going down, all the colors and everything. But what happens is like during the rest of the day, like these gray days especially, we have a 270 degree view of the Sakonet River, of the bridge. It's wow. like with days like, you know, where it's just lightly gray, you know, cloudy. The, um, you know, that, that water is just such a vibrant royal blue. Yeah. Like there's really no, better site I can find. You know, you don't have to go all the way down to Newport to get it. You can get all the perks of a Newport restaurant group restaurant and really only have to go half the way, especially if you're uh, if and, you're uh, from and, the East Bay. We've had right? others of your group in. We've had Chef Lou in Castle Hill, mm -hmm. Chef Max from Hemingway. So we've had a, a good amount of restaurants in from the Newport restaurant group. And all of them have got something special. But I have to say, I mean, I love Castle Hill, but coming to your location is an amazing trip. Oh. And, it's, and it is a special spot to come out to. So from the restaurant standpoint as a whole, you just gave us a, what our views will obviously be. Tell us a little bit about how the restaurant's set up. So, um, you know, like I said, we have a 200, yeah, slide one. Uh, we have a 270 degree view of, of the river. Um, you know, and it's just basically, we have do we have available, we have a dock there. If you wanna, in the, in the nice months, you wanna come in and, and pull your boat up and dock and come into our restaurant, we have that. We have a north and south patio facing, you know, while we just basically have all of this real estate and all these, uh, you know, this wonderful, homey, comfortable feel um, with very comfortable and but delicious food, you know, things that we're sourcing locally, things that we're really trying to, um, you know, we're really trying to ha build relationships with with farmers and, you know, oyster harvesters and seafood purveyors and mushroom growers and everybody we can kind of get under our, into our, under our wings there. Um, and so that way when you come in and you sit down and you see this beautiful view and you look at this food and hopefully that food reflects the, the beauty of the ambiance that's there and overall you have a wonderful experience with us. And it's, to that point, I mean, keeps going back to the view, food we're gonna obviously, you know, big part of it, but 
there is not bad seat in the restaurant from there the is view. Not, you know, a lot of yeah. people prefer the corner. They prefer the windows. They prefer, you know, they want they want the the the, the view there. Right. But in reality, you could be sitting in a booth all the way on the other side of from the windows, and you're probably going to get an even better view. It's like it's like going to a you know going to a sporting event. And you think you have terrible seats right. all the way up, but in reality, you actually can see everything. Yeah, it's more panoramic, and yeah, yeah. Um, you know, you get a lot more better. Uh, social media worthy pictures uh, when you're a little further out. Yeah, and even the bars. I mean, even from where you are in the bars and the restaurant, mm -hmm. that's, you know, everybody knows I like to sit at a bar. So even when I've sat at the bar, you still got a great view. Plus, it's good people watching. Absolutely. So to see there. All right, so let's get into menu. And I know that wine is a big part of what you've got going on there, but let's talk about what you brought here today first. Absolutely. Um, so starting close to you, um, these are two items that are currently on our menu. Um, we kind of have a winter, you know, fallish winter kind of combination winter. Mm -hmm. And we try to change our menu seasonally you know, with the seasons, like that, that may not always be like... The exact date Yeah, the we, can't, we can't be like March 21st, we have a whole new rollout based right. on the weather or, you know, clearly not a lot's growing right now. But um, what we can kind of do is kind of, you know, build that menu and kind of gradually roll things out as opposed to saying, here's winter, here's spring, here's summer. Um, but here right now we have a, you know, to kind of showcase that winter is not just gray and brown. Um, yes, you get a lot of that with the vegetables and the produce that are available to you. But, you know, we can have here like our beautiful kale salad. We have a mix of teat baby kale, um, a yogurt and citrus dressing. So you get all these nice, beautiful tart and, and floral notes from, uh, from nice. the dressing. Some golden beets, a little shaved fennel, uh, a little bit of fresh basil uh, mixed in and some toasted hazelnuts. So, you know, you kind of, we're kind of hitting all... We're kind of hitting like, to me, that is what a fall, winter yeah, kind of dish is. But it's fun. It's light. It's not heavy. You're not going to walk out being I know, oh, sounds man, delicious. so full. Um, and then here is our house salmon. And so what we kind of do is we have a barley risotto um, that we've kind of mixed with some local Rhode Island mushrooms. And we source our mushrooms through Rhode Island Mushroom Company Excellent. and Hillside Farm, which is also over in Tiverton. Um, and, you know... I'll call Tim in the morning and say I need I need oyster mushrooms and bluefoots and whatever you have and he'll be in the restaurant 40 minutes later That's with an cases awesome thing. like ready That's to go. An awesome, um, awesome thing. And we also get his apples apples from him too, which we currently showcase on the menu. So really? yeah, so we kind of you know we're able to kind of it's not just one specific thing per purveyor. You know these these farmers and these 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 artisans essentially are creating a lot of different things for us, um, and that way we can work with them all year round. Um, and so it's great. Uh, here we have some grilled salmon, though, um, a butternut squash velouté. So you have this nice, rich uh, butternut squash just with cream and a little bit of herb, and we just blend that till it's nice and smooth and velvety. Um, and so, oh, my God, it looks like that. So you get a nice creaminess from this risotto. You get this nice, smooth you know, elegance to the to the uh, puree, and then you get that nice fattiness uh, from, you know, and a little char from the salmon uh, there. And you'll find, like I said, a little bit of earthiness from the mushrooms and some kale that we fold into that risotto as well. Oh, God, I'm already starving. Okay. <laughs> You're only just getting started, too. This so is got crazy. One more Three more of the guests. And uh, as we you know, we're talking about Valentine's Day. Um, so we are actually going to be featuring this on our Valentine's menu. Um, and this is going to be a lobster risotto. Um, and so That's since nice. we are the boathouse, we are well known for seafood. And lobster tends to be one of it. And when you think about Valentine's Day, think about lobster. Yeah. You think about, you know, I think about lobster love. all the time. Just or for all the time. Just, yeah. just for the record, I think about it all the time. So, <laughs> but primarily, you know, Valentine's Day, you know, we think reds and Yeah, the color like goes. I'll give you that. So that's works great. I'll give you that. That's good. Uh, but we have, a, we have a lobster risotto, so we're just, make, we made a lobster stock and we fin finished that with a little creme fraiche, fresh lemon zest, and some fine herb, which is usually chervil, chive, tarragon, parsley. Um, some butter poached lobster that will just kind of be placed on top and some charred tomatoes. Uh, with there, and then we finished with a nice assortment of microgreens, micro sorrel, which give us little lemony notes. Nice. Uh, we have some mizuna, which uh, kind of give you little peppery notes, and some mosh, which are nice green, herbaceous um, oh, greens, gosh. and just so a little bit of uh, just a nice. Again, you know, you're gonna think risotto, you think heavy, but it has so many light flavors yeah. that when you're done eating it, you're not gonna be. It's not gonna be sitting right well, here. Good, you're just I, gonna be like, I got enough to sit. I'm ready. I'm ready for dessert. And so um, now. Your beverage program is a big part of your, at all the restaurants, mm -hmm. all the Newport restaurants. Absolutely. Restaurant. So, I can tell you because this is one of my favorite Chardonnays we're about to, to taste here again. Is this would go perfect with anything that you brought here? And that today. was and that was exactly the, the intention. You know, we have you know it's a you know barrel oak aged Chardonnay. It's yeah, it's basically it's it's got enough of that. It's supposed to really work well with this fattiness you know that we have here from the salmon earthiness that kind of goes throughout all of our all of our dishes here. Um, it's something that's just nice and uh, cheers, cheers, and something that's just very nice um, to pair with a lot of these dishes. And fortunately, during this time of year, like I said, with 
fall, you think of you know hef heavier, fattier, richer, right. earthier kind of dishes. Like this is something that will go with a lot of different things um, on our menu. It's not just kind of a one-trick pony. And your program overall, I mean, from the wines, cocktails, you have specialty cocktails that are on there. So mm -hmm. it's your team is coming up with these inventive things that, like you said, can go with a variety of dishes that That's are there. Kind of our goal. Our plan is to you know we we never want to stay stagnant in any way, and so we have a lot of great you know, talented people who are just constantly thinking, what can we bring in that's exciting, that's a, that's fun, that's gonna get people, you know, make people happy and pe people coming back and like, what are they gonna do next? And and that's what we kind of are trying to do with the menu, with our wine list, with our cocktails, kind of with a little bit of everything. So I'm bringing this up here, Chef, because I'm, first of all, I'm fighting myself to not take a chunk of that lobster on the bite right now, <laughs> but I'm bringing this up here because in talking about Valentine's Day, a lot of people are, you know, I've gotten different messages and things, people asking about when they should celebrate, what restaurants are doing, and that's where we came up with the idea to do this segment because Valentine's Day falls on this weird day. It falls on a Wednesday this mm -hmm. year, which is not a weird day in itself, but it's a day that falls in the middle of the week, and people, when they think of celebrating going out, it's like a Friday, Saturday, maybe a Sunday. Mm -hmm. So it's almost the Saturday to Saturday span of, of Valentine's Day this year, which, by the way, if you notice, I said Wednesday, so I am going to be on on Valentine's Day having a show. Don't ask me what we're doing yet because that'll be interesting. Um, but this menu item, talk about some of the other things that might, guests might be able to find on Valentine's Day, because you're running your Valentine's Day menu when? So we're going to actually be running it on Saturday uh, before Valentine's Day, and then also on Wednesday as well. So you we find you want to go out, like you said, you want to go out and enjoy Valentine's Day, it's usually on a weekend. It's usually mm -hmm. when you're kind of going. So we figured we would give our guests the opportunity to come out on Saturday, and then on Valentine's Day as well. Um, so that way, you know, obviously we have, we're going to have this menu, we're going to be kind of you know, we'd be excited to kind of put it out and have, you know, off, offer a supplement in, in place of our regular menu as well. So it's the 11th and the 14th of the two days that they're doing it. Mm -hmm. And a good, another good reason to have everybody on today is starting to talk about it is make your reservations now because even though it's on a Wednesday, people are still going to fill up because it's it's a busy time so, to come out. Especially with restaurants, everybody, it's all two tops. So you know, right, can only right. have so many tables. That, uh, kind Unless of you're like me and you try to go with a group of people to make it a lot more fun. Yeah. I get yelled at later on for that, but it's still a lot of fun. Right, take me. Oh, Molly's coming with me now. Here we go. All right. <laughs> three top. <laughs> It'll end up being a 13 top by the time I'm done. So we've got this dish. Is, mm -hmm. What else do you think you're putting out for that? So we're going to be doing a, an appetizer. We're going to do a lobster bisque, kind of just a nice classic traditional lobster bisque, finished with a little fresh, uh, little sherry and some uh, fresh chives um, as an appetizer. We're also going to be doing a beet salad. Um, so we're going to kind of do an assortment of beets, um, red, chioga, or the golden beets as well. Oh, um, so a nice uh, herb goat cheese, a little bit of a, a champagne, or a, sorry, excuse me, a, a sherry vinaigrette. Uh, that'll go with that, and then uh, just some, you know, some nice kind of bitter greens and, you know, endive or uh, frise, um, kind of mixed in with that. Uh, and then also, when, and on top of the uh, lobster risotto, we're also going to be doing a grilled ribeye. Oh so, so the guys were taking care of, so the ladies we, taking care of, everybody's know, all set. We're thinking that whole thing all around, yeah. you know. So that way, you know, you want you don't want something delicate and light and, and red. Well, well, it gets red, but yeah, we'll do the uh, we'll do a grilled ribeye. We're going to do the, some steak frites, uh, so grilled asparagus, and then we're going to kind of have like a chocolate red wine uh, demi glace uh, sauce that will kind of be oh over there with a little compound butter um, as well. So. Um, that so one might fill you up a little, make, make you feel like you're a little fuller. I'm okay with that it. because it sounds amazing. So this is coming up, and again, they're nice enough, they're going to run the menu Saturday and Wednesday for you. Talking about the future, real quick before I let you go, mm -hmm. is that you've got some things coming up relatively soon because time's flying by us here. Yeah, so absolutely. March is Newport Restaurant Week. Absolutely. Well, we're doing a Newport Restaurant Week, which we're working on the menu right now. Um, you know, and it's, like I said, we're gearing up for our spring menu That's as right. well. Uh, we know, we're looking to you know, also update that goes along with our brunch menu that we do every Sunday. So we're going to be kind of we're, you know we're working on a new brunch menu, new a restaurant week menu, and a new spring menu all at the same time. So and before we know it, both those our north and south patios will be open, and right. you know the weather's going to be gorgeous, and we're just going to be you know rocking and rolling. And those two things between March and usually sometime in April is when you try to get to that seasonal change. Absolutely. So you got two months of great changes that'll be coming over there. Features that you can do in March for the restaurant weeks and then getting into April when they get ready to change up for the season. And local sourcing has been an amazing part of what you guys do for your entire group. You guys are all very fond of you know, supporting the local purveyors. I will say, you know, I know that it's something I've been passionate about my whole career. You know, I've been cooking for almost, you know, in the industry for 20 years. I started in, you know, family restaurant. But, you know, when I came up in New York and I worked in Austin, Texas, and um, I've always worked closely with farmers. I've always worked within the seasons. And it's just having those relationships are what really is what makes what we do all that more special and all that more inspiring because yeah. really what happens is the farmers dictate what we do because they say, I can get you this wonderful product or would you like me to grow this for you? And then I get to be creative based on what's available to me. Um, and we get to do that with 
all the types of purveyors all around, you know, Rhode Island and southeastern New England, which is remarkable, which is something that, you know, not everybody has the opportunity or is fortunate enough to do. No, it's a very um, good point. So. Well, Chef, your creativity and your passion both show you've done a great job. Congratulations on the work that you're doing out there, and we look forward to having people come out and celebrate Valentine's Day with you and then beyond. So thank you for making Wonderful. it today. Thank you really very much. Thanks for it. having us. I'm going to take a bite of that lobster as soon as I get off. Don't worry. <laughs> no pictures, though. All right, so let me slide that out. No problem. Finish up the wine. Taylor's going to help you out here. Taylor, you can carry the glass for him. There you go. Thanks again, Chef. Thank you very Appreciate much. Have a great day. So, Saturday and Wednesday of Valentine's Day weekend, you've got plenty of time if this is one of the restaurants you want to consider to go. Plenty of time to make those reservations, but definitely look into it now. And that's a, you know, a large part of why we started the segment on Valentine's Day. My next guest, like I said earlier, she's kind of a celebrity in her own right, a celebrity chef, and we'll talk about her experiences there, but I'd like to welcome in Chef Jenny from the Redfin Crudo and Kitchen. Look at this, and she's got two bottles in there. Two bottles, Look absolutely. At that. You don't mess around. <laughs> Love it. What are these? These are a little RF or Look red fin. So cute. Yeah, we're steampunk inspired, so we always have some cool little fun. What is it inspired? Stuff. So our decor is steampunk inspired. Steampunk. So we took a lot of things that you necessarily wouldn't utilize. And refurbish them. We use uh, old church uh, things uh, for our tables and a hundred year old um, copper ceiling tiles. Really? Yep. Yeah, my husband hated that idea, but it looks beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> so now, before I want to get more into the restaurant because that's very cool, but before mentioning her husband, let's do a quick segue there. So there was this rumor out there that this whole restaurant thing between you and your husband started over kind of a Valentine's Day thing, right? So I've known my husband for a very long time, and he was an executive chef. We fell in love over oysters, and I did. The mignette, like it had that. me at hello. And um, he ran away from me, and it took me almost 10 years of courting him. And on Valentine's Day, six years ago now, he asked me to marry him after service. So That's we smelled funny. lovely. <laughs> That's so we have an affinity awesome. for Valentine's Day. That's awesome. <laughs> That's a great story. So there is a great connection there. I like that story. So let's get back. Your food is absolutely driving me crazy too now. So let's get back into the restaurant because your restaurant has gotten all this acclaim and all this wonderful stuff about how there's cute little niches to tuck into, which goes to the romantic side of talking about Valentine's Day, but great spots to go. And it's got a lot of uniqueness like you were just talking about. So kind of finish up that visual of what you were talking about the rest of the restaurant there. So when we designed the restaurant, we wanted it to be a place where people can come three, four times a week. Um, so it's like your kitchen away from home. And that's really what we designed it. But we also wanted it to be fun and exciting. And we believe that you eat with your eyes first. So when the food comes out, we want you to be excited. And then we want you to smell okay. it. And then we want you to go, oh my gosh, what is that? And I need it on my table. That's, that's <laughs> happening right now to me. So, All right. So... Atmosphere-wise, you got it covered, and you guys have knocked it out of the ballpark. Let's talk about your menu and the things you did because we're gonna we got a lot of fun stuff to cover you and I. So yeah, so we're Spanish inspired. Um, so we also hit into the Caribbean, okay. and we're an oyster house. So we have local oysters um, running from all the way from Maine. Um, we dabble a little bit into what we consider the mid part of America, but we have so many wonderful oyster farms here in Rhode Island yeah. and Massachusetts. We try to use as local as possible. Um, our octopus uh, is one of our main staples that's on our what menu. We, that's what we got here. This right. is our octopus. Um, it is a, a labor of love. Uh, we slow uh, cook this in our own corp bouillon um, for about oh, four what? hours. What? Yeah, <laughs> it's our own stock. <laughs> oh is the easiest God. way to describe it, people. <laughs> it's a bunch of yummy stuff thrown in a pot and the and cork bouillon. Cork is it? bouillon. Yeah. Oh my God, I actually said it too. And uh, and we wait for the tentacles to basically fall off. We cool that in that actual stock and then we grill it at service with oh a lot of. God. Yeah, with a lemon preserved mojo, and then we have yes, we have our our bean ragu underneath oh my there. Gosh. You gotta, I gotta we, turn this because you gotta be able to. See and this we brighten it up with, like I said, that lemon mojo just makes it so. Joe, we gotta scan in this. Char. Look at this bean right here. This is like I'm a, I love beans and everything. Look at the size of that thing. That's beautiful. Yeah, they're just exquisite, exquisite. And we try to use as local product as we can. Mm. Um, obviously, uh, octopus isn't running around um, outside our back door. Um, oh, but we, yeah, But we do get the four to six pound Spanish octopus. We're very particular about where we get things from. Um, and then our deviled eggs, which tie right into Valentine's Day because we go. actually pickle our deviled eggs. I grew up in Amish country, Pennsylvania. Really? And yes, and uh, that was something my mom could make. She was a horrific cook. Everyone asked how I ended up as a cook. I have no idea. I love her. God rest her soul. She'll, she'll admit it 100 days a week. 
Um, but yeah, those deviled eggs are an homage to my mom, just kind of stepped up a quite a bit. <laughs> and and they, they fit the Valentine's Day color and they go into the color. Yes. And then what's the last piece and, over here? And then we have our ceviches. Um, like I said, our, we're a crudo, which means raw in Spanish. Yep. So that uh, is one of our ceviches that we feature. We do rotate them quite frequently to keep them fresh and interesting and new. And uh, also what's on the market. So um, sometimes we'll have snappers, sometimes we'll have scallops, sometimes we'll have shrimp. And uh, coming into Valentine's Day, we're going to have some really fun, exciting stuff coming onto the menu for our tasting okay. menu that we're going to do. So for Valentine's Day, how are you running the Valentine's Day? So we're running Saturday to Saturday. So literally Shin every day in between. Every day in between. Perfect. We feel that you should probably celebrate Valentine's Day every day, okay. but we're giving you a seven day period to enjoy yourself. That's awesome. So uh, yeah, come in and She's join us. She's making it easy for yeah. you guys. She's <laughs> making it really easy for you. <laughs> Yeah, so we're going to do a three-course tasting menu, okay. um, and we're also going to run our surf and turf, which is going to be head-on prawns with uh, a little bit of our ch churrasco and chimichurri and a boniata uh, puree. Oh. So going back to the island, kind of inspired yeah. um, flavors, a little bit of pimentone on there to get so that heat. some tropical feel to all this. We'll have a little tropical feel, some of that Spanish influence in there, and then we go, you know, right into our cocktails. We carry it right through to make sure that our food and our cocktails all match. So let's talk about that. What did you bring here today? Absolutely. So we have two different kind of styles here. Obviously into Valentine's Day, I figured it would be appropriate to bring our sparkling um, along. Nice. This particular one is a French dry uh, sparkling. Okay. Absolutely exquisite. This is what I have at the end of the night. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. She's got it planned out already I've got it herself. all planned out. That's we have awesome. a, a system. Um, but this is exceptional. This goes with a lot of our food. It's bright. Mm. It's lively. It dances on your tongue. That's what our food like, uh, does for you too. And this is something that's very interesting. This is something that you can't find a lot of places. So this is actually made in Maine. Okay. Um, it is a sparkling yeast wine. So it is a, it's something a little different, which we like to step out of that comfort zone, but we also like to make sure that the price point of wines and cocktails can also match what you're ordering for the food. Right. So you can come in, you can dine with us several times a week or several times a month. And we're very fortunate. We have a wonderful group of people that come in quite frequently. And they're like, what do you have new? What's exciting? And uh, Adam, who likes to uh, secure our bar menu, um, does an exceptional job of bringing in great stuff yeah, from safe sellers. It doesn't sound like you lack exciting over here. There. Oh, so, we are. So we got we to take a little bit of this because <laughs> this, this is unique. We got to try that. Absolutely. One. So as she's getting into it, we're going to, to try this one. So as we get into that and talking about unique over there, you've had some, Woo! look at that. You've this had is, some this, I got unique, a little warm there. That's all right. That's nice. <laughs> You've had some unique things that you've been a part of. I have, yes. So let's talk about Master Chef. Yes. Oh, by the way, before we talk about Master Chef, now that she's poured this one. I know, you have to try it. Before, before she's, I want to get into this. Oh. You like my pen? You see this pen? Where'd you say you were from? Tantalizing. Where? I was born and raised in Amish country, Pennsylvania. My mom was an armchair quarterback. Don't. Mm. Well, so you like the pin. Patriots Nation. So you like this pin. See, she really likes my pin. But I'm a, you know, I'm a bird fan. Oh, bird fan. That's but right. it'll be a good banter. Everybody has their faults. What are we gonna? I do? know. You know, everybody has things that you know <laughs> okay. we fall short on. We fall short I'm on. All in case. Okay. Cheers. Thank Cheers. You. Enjoy. All right. So while she, while I'm enjoying this, she's gonna talk about Master Chef because this is very cool. So the first question everyone usually asks me is, is Gordon Ramsay like that <laughs> on a regular basis? Um, everyone out there. Honestly, every great chef is very intense in the kitchen. Stores. We want the, right, isn't it amazing? Um, and we want you to have the best dining experience. So we expect and demand from our staff the best. And in a very short amount of time, you have to articulate that. Hmm. He articulates it a little different than some, but I will say working under him and learning under him was amazing. And outside the kitchen, he's probably one of the nicest gentlemen you'll ever meet. Really? I did, I did um, some things in Philadelphia with him with a live audience and he literally stayed and signed every single person's book, paper, whatever they wanted, pictures, and was lovely about it. So I think they always see that kind of intense person that if you come to a kitchen that is putting out exceptional food 
and exceeding those expectations like our kitchen tries to, we're very intense, we're very right. thorough, we're very demanding on the best experience for the guests. And I think that makes sense. That's the passion of it. And that's what yes. I always hear about Gordon Ramsay is that the passion. He's so passionate. Very passionate. Joe Bastianich scares the living day. <laughs> I love Lydia. I've had the opportunity to cook for her. She's an amazing We've woman. Had Lydia I on the show get it. Yeah. We've um, had her on the is show? she not She's just awesome. lovely? She's, She's so lovely. Yep. But I'm um, cooking. We got to cook for Gordon's mom, uh, Graham Elliott's mom, and uh, Lydia. And uh, you want to talk about some intimidating ladies that raise some unbelievable restaurateurs and chefs? That's an intimidating situation. <laughs> but you won. I did. You won this. I did. So another fine representation of Rhode Island, forgetting the Pennsylvania part for a while, another fine <laughs> representation of Rhode Island winning this. I think that that's fantastic. And they were intense people. I mean, Mr. Bastanich, Joe, and... And Gordon, they're really intense people to do, and you've got to impress them a lot in order to come that far. Yeah, I mean, the whole premise of the show is that you're a home cook. So I competed against 30,000 people, quite frankly, before I even got to the show. Wow. Then 100, then down to 30. And then when it came to the last five, I was like, oh my gosh, is this really happening? I had to pinch myself, but you know what? I was an athlete all my life. I went in with the intention of that. I was focused, laser focused, studied, really put my mind to it. That's and awesome. um, honestly, I made some of the best friends of a lifetime. I was in several weddings and still keep in touch with a lot of them. They're, some of them are coming down for a special event that we have going on. So that's what we're going to lead into before yeah. she goes, we got to bring this up. So <laughs> this whole thing that you've made a lot of relationships, a lot of friendships, yes. but you also have this passionate mindset about giving back. Absolutely. So let's talk about this announcement that you have to make, what you're going to be doing. So we're excited that we're going to do our first annual Redfin Gives Back, and it's going to be March 8th. And it's going to be a five-course tasting menu with wines from Sage Cellars. Thank you so much to them. And it is going to benefit adoption and foster care of Rhode Island. Something that's close to my heart. My grandparents met in an orphanage. Um, my dad adopted me when I was seven. And uh, I can't say enough about the families that take the time to really mold and shape the future. So we want to give back. So we have some chefs, chef friends that I'm so excited to call chef friends um, that are coming in from Food Network, some from California. Um, I have somebody coming from Bar Rescue. Um, we're hoping that we have a surprise celebrity chef coming from the Boston area. We're trying to get him down if he can clear his schedule. And uh, we have a few people coming in from MasterChef. So I'm pretty excited. It'll be an awesome evening, very interactive, limited seats. Um, but you can call us and get, uh, get on. What's the date of this? March 8th. March 8th. So you got a little yep. bit of time, not long, but you got a little bit of time. To Perfect make sure. Valentine's thing. gift if you haven't gotten something yet. That's a good point. There <laughs> you go. But that's a lot of chefs. That's a lot of people that you're coming in for. It is a lot of chefs. And we have our very own Ladiva Jones. <laughs> who is hosting the event for the evening. We're so thrilled. I couldn't ask um, for a better group of human beings to do this event with. That's and awesome. it'll be a fun night. It'll be a night that you'll remember. And you'll be like, remember when we did this? We have to do this type of thing again, so. Now, the information, can, people can find this where? You can <clears> find <throat> it on our website, okay. um, www.redfincrudo.com. We're also on Eventbrite. But if you just okay. give us a ring at the restaurant, We'll make sure we take now, care of it. Now, is the restaurant doing just that event for the evening, or is that... Yep, we're just that event for the evening, okay. so like I said, it's very limited seating, um, and we're going to have interaction with the chefs, so they'll actually be out of the kitchen, so cool. talking to you, pouring your wine, having you ask questions, you know, what's this guy like, or who's so, like this to work with? i got to tell you, <laughs> that interaction makes such a huge, huge difference. So I, you and I were speaking, I was just at Sun Wine Fest this past weekend. Yes. And, the chefs there were doing the same thing. The winemakers were doing the same thing. They were out there interacting with the guests, talking about what they're serving, what it goes good with. That's a really, really important thing. And for the type of people that you're bringing in, I think it's going to not only impress you, but it's going to leave you feeling a little bit better about the cause you're also supporting for them. Yeah. So, and that cause, congratulations. That's really, really nice of you guys to be doing that. Absolutely. That's it's the, it's the smallest thing that we can do to give back. And uh, we're very honored that we're able to do that um, and excited. And hopefully this will be something we'll be able to continue every year. Pick a new charity and a new cause and uh, give back to Rhode Island because they've given so much to us. Well, so this could be the first of many things that you'll see Absolutely. for the first of many. Well, <laughs> congratulations to you guys on not only your success, but the things you're doing to give back and your style. This is a, a very cool, unique concept, and you guys have excelled at it. So you got a lot of exciting stuff going on over there. <laughs> Sunday, I'm not going to talk to you about the Super Bowl anymore, but Sunday, know. you know. We'll talk after. We'll talk after. The birds after. win. <laughs> we'll talk after for sure. <laughs> now we're going to really talk after. Because now there'll be some social media going back and forth. Well, thank you for making the time, Chef. I Always really, really appreciate you coming in. 
then we will. I'm hoping I'm going to go to this dinner, so I'm going to try to arrange with you, girl, because it sounds very cool. You got so it. The girls will help you out. Thank you again for bringing this. It's my fantastic. pleasure. And I'm going to take this. Yeah. Enjoy. <laughs> I love this. Yeah. Thank you, Taylor. Okay. All right. A couple more things. There we go. That's our stuff. All right. So, as I get ready now, we're going to make this transition to go to Super Bowl, talking about Jenny's team, you know, that is going to lose on Sunday. I um, won't say that too much further, but talking about that, we're going to get ready to transition into Super Bowl Sunday. So, a lot goes on. There's a lot of events all over the place, different bars, different pubs. But a lot of the comments I got were, well, where can we actually eat? Not just go and have nachos and sit there and watch the game, but actually have a great meal and enjoy it. Because you're out for three and a half, four hours, sometimes more, when you go out to watch Super Bowl. So the first guest that I want to bring in is from the Thirsty Beaver. I want to bring in Chef Sonia. So we can talk about the Thirsty Beaver locations and what they got going on. And specifically, oh, <laughs> her style of food and a blue drink. Look yeah, at this. Preserve the pets. Look at that. Amazing. Oh, my God, the wings are... Smells driving me crazy. Beautiful. Thank for Thanks for coming nice in, Chef. You. Nice to Thank see you. you. No Look at you. She's got the beef all on there. Hey, nice. sorry. Right. I'm gonna have you turn so everybody can see you, and we're gonna talk all about the amazing things that you got going on over there. First of all, I, I, I can't highlight enough about Thirsty Beaver, about Ed Brady and his team, and he's got a yes. lot of other great restaurants in there. He's got now the Four Corners, and he's got Milk Money. But this, what you guys have done, and your first location was in Cranston. Cranston, yes. Yep. So now I used to live in Cranston, and that's the location that I would go to. One of the first things that sticks out, and this goes to it right here, is that you are not the typical, typical pub, pub food. Not at all. No. So tell me about what you brought here today. Uh, for Super Bowl, since you know it's Sunday, we have uh, garlic parm buffalo wings. Garlic. Then, garlic parm. Yes. And buffalo. Mm -hmm. And then we have pink pig hot or mild sausage with sidewinder fries. It's like a twist on a potato wedge. Some onions and peppers on that. We have our pork egg roll that's on the menu. There's spinach... Um, Pickled red onions in there with the house barbecue ranch. And then these, these are my favorite. They are, believe it or not, they're going to be shepherd's pie balls. Get out of here. <laughs> You're ki oh, give me one of that. I'm going to try that. Um, shepherd's pie? Yeah. Got some mashed potatoes, some ground beef in there, some corn. Oh my God, it's amazing. So good. <laughs> and then we have a house gravy. There's a little bit of duck fat in there. You know spice. what I just learned before I came on? Friday is National Tater Tot Day. Did it you is. know that? And you want to know what? What? Thursdays we have eight dollar tater tots. Get out of here! I swear. And then so now you got to come up with something for Friday. Now I, I told you. Now that. we yep. need something for Friday. <laughs> National Tater Tot Day is Friday. I just wanted it to crazy yep. the food things you learn. So, inspiration. Talk to me about where, like, where did you come up with that? Um, my mom, my grandma. We always made shepherd's pie. You can't beat it. You know the creamy corn, the potatoes, and it's just a big bowl of heaven. Mm. So I was like, hey, why not? You know, I did shepherd's pie on the menu. Sold. But I smoked the corn on that one, so I was like, let's twist it a little. Okay. So I was like, let's make them into fried bites. Who doesn't like anything fried? And this is true. It is. Unfortunately, this is true. But that is absolutely, I just, I'm sorry, that was good. I had to eat that. And that was a unique thing. That's going to be um, a weekend special again. I did it last week, sold. Tons of them, sure. Yeah. So, for Super Bowl coming up. Yes. All right. Both Thirsty Beavers have got slew of TVs spread throughout the place. Yes. Uh, Cranston has, I think, a dozen. Smithfield has a dozen as well. We have a big projector. Um, it's going to be loud, rowdy. We have a lot of specials like these. We have a drink special pretty much. Just a little bit so there you go. We have a drink special here with Pat Steen. There's some um, Bully's raspberry uh, yogurt and blue carico, sugared rim with strawberry and then cherries. Nothing beats but Pat's right there. Oh my god, but you're going to need to eat a lot to have this drink because that drink looks like it's going to last a little while. So, well, some people would last a little while. Not me, unfortunately. So, style of food, we definitely got you covered. Yep. Super Bowl Sunday coming up. You guys have busy weekends as it is because you also just launched something new not that long ago. You now have brunch on we Saturday do. and Sunday. We uh, do. Brunch Saturday and Sunday from 10 to 12. We have, you know, your typical avocado toast with a poached egg. That's typical? Some... Avocado uh, toast with a poached egg? Yeah, avocado yeah, toast is I typical? Mean, it is around here. You're not going to find that at the Thursday. Well, you got to come to the Beaver for that. Yeah. We have uh, the, fr the French toast, pancakes, berries, chocolate chips on those. We have uh, home fries. We have a corned beef hash. Anything you're pretty much looking for, we do. We have weekend specials. Uh, this week we might do a wrap with uh, scrambled eggs, some sausage in there, home fries in it to give it that crunch, you know? Nice. Kind of nice. like a burrito. Yeah. But yeah. So now, Sundays, what time is the brunch? 10 to 12. 
for Both Saturday days. and Sunday. Sorry. Yes. Saturday and Sunday, 10, 12. So for Super Bowl Sunday this weekend, you'll still have brunch because the yes. game's not till later in the day. Yes. Okay. Just now, there. yeah, so I was going to say, start the day there and then come back. Yeah, come back, you yeah. know, stay all day. Yeah, that's probably Eat a lot what, of food, drink enough. That's probably what happened to me. I wouldn't be able to leave. <laughs> so from the perspective of people coming in for this weekend, going back to the yes. Super Bowl, space-wise, should people be calling to make reservations? Because the, the games are going to be spread throughout the restaurant. Yep, the TV we, have a, we have a projector, too, so that's going to be on, like, the back wall pretty big. But we do, you know, reservations. We can do 5, 10, 15, 20, 30 people if you want. Really? We, we never say no. That's, wow, that's a big group of people to be able to get in. I mean, we can do it. We have the we accommodate 150 people. So I mean, if you want 150 people, just call us, book out the whole thing. There you go. You know, make food, have a good buffet. We can do anything for buffets. Nice. If that's what you want. We cater. So talking about catering and buffet, that leads me to another good point with you guys, and this is kind of separate from the Super Bowl, but important for the the company as a whole. Both locations have been heavily involved in community support, yes. community activities, yes. right? Talk to us a little bit about some of the events that you've been a part of with Thirsty Beaver because you guys, by nature, your owners and Ed Brady, who I know well, you guys give back a lot. Yes. So. Um, throughout over the year, every year we do two annual barbecues and, well, dinners kind of. We do the homeless barbecue, I think it's in the end of August. Okay. And then we go down to Providence and all the community people help out. We pretty much donate food for that. It's hot hamburgers, hot dogs, you know, all the good stuff. And then um, the Thanksgiving one, we do turkey, potatoes, normal Thanksgiving dinners. We give the homeless back. Um, also, I know Ed's been a part of like the Cranston groups. He's been he's alumni there. I know yeah. he helped out in the, I want to say the auditorium there. He got new chairs. Yeah, he did. We, we did, did help the whole redo thing. the auditorium. Yeah. Yep. And he's then, a Cranston boy. That is. He oh he is. And then I'm pretty sure they just redid a basketball court in Cranston, if I'm not wrong. Wow. So you guys have really given back. We do. The, the one that's for, that you give back to the, to the homeless, that's the Thanksgiving or is that the summer one? We do both. You do both, We do okay. the Thanksgiving and the summer barbecue. And the other thing that I saw that was really cool that you guys had done was this Toys for Tots in yes. December. Yes. The pictures were amazing. It was like half the restaurant filled up with yes. toys. So this year we did both locations like we always do. Uh, the whole back restaurant for Cranston was full with bikes, toys, you name it. There was anything there. Cranston and Smithfield had the same thing, so Smithfield was just as packed. Just picture like how much we had at each location, because how many people we can fit. Right. It was like a good quarter of the restaurant. That's so. amazing. That's unbelievable that you guys get back in that way. And I think that if you're visiting them, not just for Super Bowl this weekend, but in general to go out, these are the things you should think about because you're supporting people that are community minded. Now, talk to us about hours and menu times. So, what are the hours typically for both restaurants? Uh, both restaurants for brunch, 10 to 12. Yep. And then dinner is, well, lunch and dinner is 12. And then kitchen closes at 11 okay. during the week, midnight on Friday and Saturday. So this weekend for Super Bowl, well, I mean, Super Bowl's going to go late, so I'm assuming you're going to go right up to 11 o'clock for yes. kitchen hours on Super yes. Bowl Sunday. Okay. Um, if there's still guests in there that want food, we don't say no. My motto is, why say no? They can just go somewhere else. <laughs> you know, that might do a late night menu. So just take them in. They're already there. You know, they want food. If it's something simple, we have no problem. And then they're off. So for Super Bowl, you're going to have a ton of options that go yes. into the, to these guys, not just from the food perspective, but also your beverages. You guys have got creative cocktails. You've got yep. a lot of beers that are on tap over yes. there. We have, I want to say, 30, 36. Really? If I'm not wrong. That's amazing. If I, if I can count, you know, past 10, <laughs> I think it's there. <laughs> so you're somewhere in the 30-ish range yes. for your beers that you can yes. choose from. We do a lot of craft beer. Uh, we have logs that switch over currently, so I mean Friday it might be one log. Yeah. Sunday it could be a different one. We just get all the local craft beer and top. Oh, and that's part of the fun of going and experimenting and trying them all out. Yes. So, chef, from your time in the kitchen, and yes. these things are absolutely amazing yes. that you came up with. Thank what you. are some of your favorite things that you like to put out and make that are different for a pub and bar style? Um, I just like to take you know something so simple like this and just put a twist on it. I mean, who would really think you know this is good? I mean. I love it. Yeah, not me. What I else do you got? What else have you done that's unique? Oh, uh, that's unique. We just we do a lot of smoke things in house. I mean, we partnered up with Kink Pig. We also own them. Uh, this week we're getting in the sausage, mild or okay. spicy. So that's you know what we do there. We do a lot of more like meals. We twist up like you know mac and cheese. We do barbecue plates with Pink Pig now. Okay. Um, we may you know do a bacon jalapeno baked mac and cheese. That's not on our normal menu. Wow. So we offer it. Um, we do a different type of wonton or like egg roll each week if we, you know, have time nice. and space on our specials. What most thing about the specials is we just change it up. One week we can have salmon on there. Next week, you know, we can bring in, I've brought in octopus, so we try just doing That's fun awesome. stuff. 
And so I heard, and I make sure I got this, you might, you'll know it better than I have. There was something, a pulled pork vegan thing that came in or something? What was this now? So for the vegan friendly vegetarian options out there, we brought in jackfruit. Jackfruit, that's what it was. Jackfruit. Okay. It's, yep. It looks like a big, I guess would like say papaya. Okay. It's like bigger than a watermelon. When you cut it open, there's like little seeds and once you pull them apart and get to it, it looks like pulled pork. Really? So what I did this week, actually, I did that on a brioche roll. Unfortunately, if you're a vegan, you can't have that because there's like bread and okay. milk and eggs in there. But we do have, you know, a wrap that's vegan friendly. Um, I did a house blueberry jalapeno barbecue sauce and then put coleslaw on there. You got like the sweet going with the spicy because the jackfruit is very fruity. It's very sweet. Okay. So you want, I complimented it with the spicy and the blueberry barbecue, which I made in house. That's fantastic. That makes me hungry right there just for what you made in house. But you said so it's the texture of how you pull it out. Yep, it's that the makes texture it look of it. Like it the... looks exactly like pulled pork. That's awesome. That's a little weird. Right? Now is that something? Is that <laughs> now is that something you guys are gonna have on a keep yes, going forward? Yes, we have basis? going forward from today on. We're gonna have that option. So if you're vegan or vegetarian and that's an option you want, you can come and get it. You just gotta tell our server or waiter. That's excellent. You can get it. So now you mentioned that you're doing wontons. Yes. Which wonton and, and, egg rolls. and the egg rolls that you're doing, yep. which is very cool to do. Tell us again what was in these because that was one of the comments I got is about the ingredients and the different things that you put in there. So tell us what yep. was in those. Again. So this one's a pulled pork. Pickled red onion, spinach, some gouda cheese. Spinach and gouda cheese. Yes. In there. What's one of the other ones that you had coming we out? We have a vegetarian one on That's that. Nice. Okay. It's uh, carrots, uh, I want to say cabbage, some red peppers, a little bit of sweet chili sauce. Okay. And then it gets served with the ginger ponzu sauce. Nice. Which the ponzu sauce is sesame oil, some ginger, some a little bit of vinegar, brown sugar, garlic, some scallions. Yeah, all this is up. all <laughs> awesome, unique stuff. This is very cool. So. I'll be eating those when I get off the air. No one's going to be sharing those with me, for sure. I'll be having those with some wine, believe it or not, because they look amazing. This, the sauce that you put on it, how many different wings types do you guys do? Oh, we have tons. I mean, There's I would lot, say though. like 20, 25, 20 if not more, yes. And obviously, this is going to be a big Super Bowl thing coming up. Yes, that's uh, one of our top sellers, actually. That with uh, sweet chili, we also have a house sriracha maple brown sugar. You got the sweet, but the little spicy with it. It's a glaze, so... Oh. That's another top seller of ours, and then you know you have your buffalo and the barbecue, which yeah, I just like that the buffalo sell. and the parmesan are combined here. That's like <laughs> unbelievable. All right, we've covered a lot. Another, it's a great Super Bowl option. Yes. Make sure that you consider it, and you got two locations to choose from from yes. where they are. But check early because now we're on Wednesday and Super Bowls is coming Sunday. So yes. Chef has got you covered for food. The team oh, over yeah. there have you covered for beverages. You just got to make sure you get yourself out, decide the right place to go. Yes. Chef, thanks for making the time to Thank come you. in. Really appreciate, I appreciate it. it. Beautiful stuff. Save me those. I'll be eating Save for sure. Yep. All right. Christina and Lisa will let me eat those, I think. <laughs> oh, I did it again. Yeah, you did. But I said I messed up you this time. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Thank you, Taylor. No problem. That's, you guys should try that and let me know how it is. Yeah, you got to try that one. So, finishing off with Super Bowl and getting ready to bring in my next guest is that there's a lot of different places, a lot of different options that are out there. And the reason I chose both Thirsty Beaver and my next guest, Ladder 133, is the uniqueness of what they offer. So I want to bring in Derek from 133, who is right here in Providence, and they're also kind of celebrating this anniversary. They've definitely reached a milestone of where they've been, and they got some great history. So we're going to talk about this history, the milestone. Hey, Hello. look at that! Oh my gosh! That's your turkey sandwich. Um, that's the turkey sandwich. Yeah. Oh, loving that. That's so cool. I should bring this. We'll slide this up afterwards. Look at this. Yeah, this. I'm going to be starving by the time I get off here. Thank you for coming. Yeah, thank really you. appreciate you coming appreciate in. It. So. This is something that I was finding the pictures on that was out there. And I got to start, we're going to get into everything, but believe me, we're going to get into the history and everything else, but we got to start with this turkey sandwich because yeah. you guys have got a smoker, yeah. right? So let's talk about the sandwich and the smoker thing. So let's yeah, go so through we, uh, We're lucky enough to have a Southern Pride smoker. Um, it's a huge rotisserie. We basically slow smoke our turkey oh, breast. talking to me in a <laughs> Enjoy. Mm. Um, slow smoke it for two hours, seasoned rosemary, fresh herbs. Uh, we're going to smoke that for two hours, it comes out, we splice it thin, we're going to have bacon on there, we do our own white Alabama barbecue sauce. That's what you see drizzling out there. Um, we also have an uh, onion balsamic jam on the bottom there, it's almost like a Thanksgiving dinner there. Wow. Um, put it all together, it's a great sandwich, we actually won an award. That's what I wanted to say, what was the yeah, award? Um, best turkey sandwich in America by uh, Restaurant Hospitality Magazine. Restaurant hospitality magazine. Yeah. So if you think the hospitality people would have some idea what they're talking about, look at the size of yeah. this sandwich. So I don't see a lot of people finish it, but uh, <laughs> you know we do walk around. It goes home, right? Yeah, Everybody exactly. takes it home. 
But uh, yeah, I see the people uh, fork and knife, and uh, but yeah, I'm impressed when people do finish it. My God, I would be too, because I don't think I could. All right, so I had to segue just to that sandwich because it's so amazing, and the smoker that everyone's talking about. Yeah. Let's kind of lend into that from there about the uniqueness of Ladder 133. You guys are now going on nine? We're in our ninth year right now. Nine years? Yeah. So yeah. nine years to have this location in Providence over there. A unique spot. A very unique spot. So I want to kind of go into the rest of your uniqueness that you got going on because it's, sure. not, it's unusual. So. Yeah. Uh, we're actually, it's a historical fire station. It was uh, built in 1902. Um, it was one of the first fire stations in Providence. Um, horse drawn. Um, a lot of history to it. We get a lot of firefighters coming in, uh, but we want to. We, we built ladder on that sports bar with that kind of elevated feel of the experience, the food, right. just that little different experience that we're gonna average see that average sports bar. And there's still elements of that history in the building. Yeah, um, I mean the restaurants on the first floor, the second floor right above you is where the firefighters stay. So I mean it's like the day they left. They have their bed frames and bureaus up there. So. Really? Yeah. So there's a lot of history. They say it's haunted. So <laughs> <laughs> they say it's haunted. upstairs only though, right? Exactly. Yeah. Upstairs only. Yeah. So and uh, we recently just expanded next door to us uh, uh, for a private function room. Okay. Um, that was very recent. So that's let's talk about that. So you're not a, a new event space that you have, which yep. we're short of in the city, and we talk about this on a regular basis. Yep. So tell us about the event space. So we extended from ladder. You can walk into the left as our restaurant, to the right as our event space, which we rent out for our private parties. Okay. Um, so we're booked right now. Friday and Saturday is very booked all the way up into April, but people can call, check out our website, ladder133.com. And uh, they can book online. They can come right in. We'll give um, you know walkthroughs and book from there. But uh, any second hold up to how many people? We can hold up to about 125 people. Wow. Uh, for a dining experience, we could probably seat about 80 people seated dinner at once. That's a lot. Still, yeah. that's fantastic. Yep. So we're actually we're opening that up for our, our Super Bowl as well. So both rooms will be open for Super Bowl. Both rooms will be open. Yeah. So you got the entire space. So that's a lot of room to fit everybody over there. Yes. But we're gonna get back to the menu because this is yeah. staring at me in a yeah. second here. But I want to <laughs> I want to just touch upon the rest of the environment. So kind of give us a visual. You talked about how the, the left and the right for the different rooms, but yeah. how's the rest of the um, restaurant set? So the restaurant you walk in, you're going to be surrounded by 33 HD TVs, big screen TVs. So you're going to you get have 33 the, TVs on a regular basis. Yeah, actually, when we open our patio, we get an extra two out there as well. That's awesome. Yeah, um, private room. We have another three in there. So it's it's the ultimate sports experience. Um, any game that's on that's big, you're going to have a surround sound on. And you're going to be surrounded by TVs. A lot of people walk in and they say, can I be close to a TV? I said, yeah. I guarantee yeah. you. <laughs> I think you'll be okay. You know. But 33 TVs? Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Well, what happens too on Sunday football, we have the Sunday ticket, um, okay. which everybody wants to see their favorite game. Um, we can literally change every single TV mm -hmm. in the restaurant. Um, so... There's, there's so you got some interesting conversations going on there on any given Sunday. Carl, Absolutely. Sundays leading up to fun. Super Bowl. Sundays are great. Now, I've been to the bar. Natural spot. I know that's surprising to people. But I've been to the bar, and you have a good-sized bar that's set up. There. Yeah, and it's actually a historical bar as well. That that was built in 1888. That's, really? Uh, that was took, uh, taken from an old saloon out west, taken across country, and um, solid mahogany wood. It's, it's got a lot of history yeah, to it. it's beautiful. I yeah. didn't realize the history behind yeah, it, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's a lot of history throughout the entire, the entire building. That's fantastic. Yep. That's a really cool thing to hear about as well. All right, let's go transition back to menu. Sure. We're not going to just about these two dishes, but what else did you bring up today? So you're looking at the buffalo chicken mac and cheese. Oh, my God. Uh, again, we want to elevate our uh, food, our experience, everything. Uh, we, we To order, we're getting uh, mozzarella cheese, cheddar cheese. You also have gouda cheese in there, uh, melted fresh chicken, buffalo sauce. We're going to put it in a hot iron skillet. Panko breadcrumbs on top of that and finishing off in the oven. Yeah, okay. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Then you need a nap. Yeah, no, I need a nap after the turkey one, let alone after this one. So where does, and I don't want to skip over other items that you got sure. on the menu, because I want to talk about that, but where is the inspiration, where did the thought process come behind the style of the menu? Um, well, myself, my business partner, Damien, uh, Chef Donald, we're, we're very hands-on. We, we talk a lot to the customers. We, we kind of feel how the customers like in our menu. We actually change up our menu once a year. Once a year. Yeah, so in September, we kind of take a feel of what people are asking for, what people like. If some people like it, it's staying on the menu. If they don't like it, it's coming off and we're creating something new. So let's go back to that for a second. So talk sure. about the, the smoker, because there's other items you use on the smoker. Yeah, so we, 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 again, we have the Southern Pride smoker. Um, and obviously with specials, we're doing different specials in there. But on our regular menu, we're slow smoking the turkey breast. We have uh, chicken wings that we are smoking, slow smoking. Uh, we're also doing our pulled pork in there as well. So uh, the, t the chicken wings actually come out of the uh, smoker, cooked, and then we just flash fry to order. So wow, yeah. 
So is the smoker, the smoker's out back at the restaurant? Right? Oh, back, it's a big rotisserie smoker. Yeah. <laughs> I, so I would, and this is segue, I know a weird story. So one of the times I was going in, yeah. that's what I was smelling. Like you can exactly. smell it from the yeah, outside, Yeah, it's outside, right? so you, we okay. like to create that experience before you even get in. Yeah, because it was. <laughs> it was like I got two steps before the door that I'm entering, and it hit me, and yeah. I'm like looking around, like, yeah. where is this Yeah, thing? if you're lucky enough to be there on the day that I was smoking, it's, it's pretty cool. Yeah, it was yeah. a weekend, so you must have been smoking. Yeah. Was coming. So now, the rest of the menu set up from there. Yep. That you've got. What are the hours that you guys are serving? So we're actually we're open seven days a week. We're serving our entire menu seven days a week till midnight. Really? Yeah. Oh, that's yeah. nice. See, you got plenty of choices. You're not going to have any problems to go over. Yeah. Now for Super Bowl Sunday coming up, you mentioned that you got tons of TVs. Yeah. You open up the entire space. Mm -hmm. Is there anything different happening menu wise, or other things are being added for the uh, day? So we're going to throw some specials on. Uh, okay. The chef's going to put uh, you know some select select. Uh, uh, menu items that he's going to enhance and you know create some specials with. Uh, we have our our drink specials that we actually run seven days a week. Uh, so we're doing six dollar Tito's. We're doing um, your pitches of beer, uh, pitches of margarita, and pitches of sangria that we run special seven days a week. So you have gonna, sangria all the time. Yeah, and I actually brought. Oh, uh, let's see what we got here. Talking about sangria. So it's going to go in this. Very cool. Mason jar, sixty-four ounce pitcher. Wait, this is what you put it into? Yeah, that's our beer. That's our sangria. That's our margarita pitches. That's so cool. Yeah. yeah. Now wait, this isn't a single serve. No, well, okay, I was going to say yeah. <laughs> I'm in rough shape. <laughs> yeah, that's going to go to the table. So Obviously, three or more people no, can, yeah, can just share play that. with you. I think that's awesome. And then one other thing, we have our Tito's. We talked about. We're going to do a Moscow Mule in there. But we're also gonna supersize it to, Whoa, do, <laughs> holy God. to do our 64 ounce Moscow mule. That's so cool. And that's our party size, and you know, we can uh, serve three or more people on that. That is awesome. Yeah, yeah that's so. this is my kind of like drinking and eating. Yeah, there so for sure. you know, it's a fun experience. We like to we like to have fun there. Yeah, it doesn't seem like you do. <laughs> All right, so. Okay, I don't even know where to start on the drinks here. All right, let's talk about the rest of the drinks because you these things got to be distracted. Sure. Beers. Beers. We got um, we have about twenty beers on tap. Six of them on our steady rotation for different um, craft beers. Uh, again, when we talk to our customers, they're asking for a colon for beers. We're gonna put those on our six beer rotation tap. So, is there beers that are local sourced as well? Uh, we do have uh, local sourced beers, um, and those are constantly on rotation. We try to keep up with that. And okay. There's so many, but um, on that six beer rotation, we like to keep rotational uh, local beers on that. Nice. Okay. Yeah. So in the nine years that you guys have been there, it sounds like you've mastered a lot, added a lot of different things. The event room, which is brand sure. new that you said you've added in. Yeah, it's been, and then been very well. The evolution of your menu over there. Mm -hmm. This is not, you guys are not the typical space for sure. Typical menu, I should no, say. No, no. So what do you see for the future? You think there's things that you guys are gonna add on now to keep doing? Yeah, and uh, we're constantly learning, obviously. And as you see the menu evolve, we are, we're not gonna stop there. We're just gonna keep evolving with the menu and what the trends are, what people are asking for, and uh, you know, just keep that elevated experience. That's awesome. Yeah. The event space that you guys, that you talked about that's new, is that something that can be booked any day of the week? Yeah, we're, we can open that seven days a week for any kind of function, um, bridal showers, baby showers, to, you know, rehearsal dinners. Um, uh, the menu's on our website, and okay. you can check out actually pictures on our website. We actually have a live tour on our website as well, so they can go through the event space as well as the restaurant. Now, getting to this weekend and circling back to Super Bowl before I let Derek go, is that I know that you guys are already getting busy. You've got a lot of reservations we were talking about that have already come in. Yeah. So if people really want to come over now, they should get ready to come in for the bar space, to come over early. Yeah, it's kind of like a race to the bar right, right now. So right. Uh, bar space is open. They're going to be standing room. Um, always check in to see if a, a res uh, reservation is canceled, but um, it is going to be a, a packed event. And you're opening up right at lunchtime and staying open through the game. Yep, 1130 actually, and we're open all night. Perfect. Yeah, okay. it should be a fun time. So a lot of people should be wearing hats gear this weekend. <laughs> if you are a Philadelphia fan, stand in the back of the room. I'm like it. So if you're a fan of all fans, everybody should go and enjoy the game. It should be great. You guys have got a lot together. You've done an awesome, awesome setup over there. Thanks I have to lot. congratulate you on the nine years, which I think is wonderful. We appreciate and it. And this menu's fantastic. Thank you for coming in today and yeah. highlight. It was really good to have Thank you. Thank you. Really appreciate it. All right. All right. These big things are going to slide <laughs> out. These, these things are making me thirsty. All right. All right, so as I get ready to close, we covered a lot of great stuff. We covered Valentine's Day, obviously. We covered Super Bowl. As I said, next week we'll cover a little bit more of Valentine's Day. If you are thinking about Super Bowl, call Derek now. Call over to Ladder 133. Talk to the guys at Thirsty Beaver. And Valentine's Day reservations, start them early. Get in there. That's why we brought it up. But I'm Rick Simone. Thank you for joining me today on The Taste. I'll see you next Wednesday.